Hello, happy Monday, welcome to Art Day. It's another week of doing art and today I want to color this particular uh, page here that was a gift for our second anniversary of my best friend Tina and I meeting. So I got this earlier this year and I thought, ah, oh, well, today I want to color it. And uh, this is pretty much the life of my husband and I. Uh, with all the things that we do. Um, I hope, I really hope that uh, it will be as quiet outside as it is right now. Um, I do have the window really wide open because it is uh, really warm in the studio. We have summer temperatures here, although it is a second half of October. Um, so I really hope that uh, the background noise is either non-existent or I can filter it to a point that you are not annoyed. Uh, keep fingers crossed. Now for this particular coloring page what I want to do is using alcohol markers and then maybe a few colored pencils on top to give this uh, some color here and uh, yeah see see what I can do there. I hope you had a great weekend by the way and uh, are maybe doing some artwork while you're watching. Uh, if you want to th send that to me on either Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, tag me somewhere or send it via email. Feel free. I I'd love to see what you're working at. And um, yeah, now it's time to talk about this uh, page here, I think. Uh, so... Uh, this is, of course, Hubby and I playing because we are board gamers. This is Grisou, one of the little sweet plushy things that we have. And this is Psyduck, the second one that we have. Uh, this is Daniel, of course, uh, either playing or working at his job. I could um, do, I, I could think both would be suitable here. Uh, this is me at my job, <laughs> painting, uh, just the hopster and I um, in the middle. Um, him woodworking a lot, again, board gaming me with the fan because I don't go well with hot temperatures and uh, hubby being hungry and me cooking. This is uh, all the things that we love. So I'm not sure if I want to zoom in further. Um, let me see. So Daniel's wearing pretty much the same t-shirt or whatever here. Um, I'm wearing different things everywhere <laughs> with a scarf. <laughs> it's an icy winter and I'm still painting. <laughs> uh, so I think I won't jump with colors between the panels, but go panel by panel so I could actually zoom you in a bit. Hold on, let me do the zoom you in. Oh, that's maybe a bit too much. Hold on. Oh, like that. I think that is suitable for you being able to see something. I do have just a paper pad underneath uh, just to have a bit of uh, cushion. So um, also this is a um, Copic marker paper. So this paper is designed for alcohol markers. That's why I choose to work with alcohol markers on that. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Tina used ink that is also alcohol marker friendly, so no smudging expected here. But well, let's see. Um, we This is definitely our gaming table, so I need a walnut brown. I might go with the uh, color pencils on top, by the way, uh, because... Um, I might not have a few shades of um, markers that I would need to only work with the Copics. Sometimes I just really like to use the colored pencils on top to make something even more, um, let's say, I don't know, full and vibrant. I don't know. So uh, the table again is walnut brown. So um, how am I going to... 
Uh, hold on, hold on. I actually need a flower pot or something to store my markers so that I can see them easily. Hold on a second. I'm gonna... You know, if I'm just working with a few shades, for example, I'm working on a Beyond the Lines video where I work with um, with those markers just with a certain color and it's monochromatic, I can choose all of my colors beforehand and uh, otherwise I store them flat and I cannot really see the colors very well of everything seen. So I'm just going to move them to um, do have this flower pot here so I can see all the colors on the caps easily and that should help me deciding which marker to use for what rather fast and since hold on since I only plan to film about two hours I want to make sure that I don't dilly dally with time that uh, is for well looking for colors or markers because I haven't uh, a efficient uh, way of looking at them but now I think see I can maybe choose them a bit quicker. I use um, the laying down storage because it um, makes the markers the the alcohol ink distribute very well and it keeps my markers juicy on both tips so they're all double-sided so uh, it keeps them juicier on both sides that is why I do um, store them horizontally but now let's uh, get finally going to the colors uh, I do have a sheet next to me that I can use for testing colors um, I might want to start with the skin tone first. So Hubby is a bit darker from the skin tone. He has more of a yellowish tint than I do. I'm just super pale. <laughs> so I'm going with a pinkish white for me. And maybe... What are you? A milky white? Yeah, because I'm such a... Such a palo matte. Maybe a little bit of a light grape for shading. That would be my colors that I'm going to choose. And I'm going to have them on my block uh, all listed if you like a certain combo that I'm using or anything. Uh, you can look it up and also see close-up photos and stuff of this on my block. So every Art Day video, every draw for initiative video and every uh, beyond the lines video do have a um, a blog post that uh, is always published an hour after the video is published so you never need to write something down if you like a certain combo that I'm using of any materials or whatever so just giving myself here a base coat on my skin I don't care if I go over the lines here or there that is nothing that I'm too concerned of but now I bring in the uh, what's it called milky white right yeah the milky white and I'm going to start a bit of shading there my hairline because um, in our living room this is where the windows are so the light comes from the um, from the right hand side so I will have a bit of shadow towards the left I'm just feathering this in. And the trick with uh, alcohol markers is that you layer them 
meaning um, they blend together super nicely if you go with layers and the paper is kind of juicy and wet and that means that I this is the grape one by the way going very light with a little bit of this color here just a bit and now I will blend this out with the lightest color that I had. And that is the trick of uh, alcohol markers, why you can get such smooth um, transitions and blendings between colors, because they push their ink around, so you can lighten things up by having a light marker on top of a dark marker and then it pushes that pigment to the side pretty much and you get something like a light spot or a highlight there depending on how much you put down and it just well blends light and dark or different shades of a color together really well you see here it was uh, the the uh, grape color was really dark at first, so now coming in with the lightest tone, my first tone on top, it's way darker. I'm gonna go in a bit more with my uh, milky white, that is the yellowish tone. Because though I'm very much paler than my hubby, I still have a yellow tint on my skin don't have a rosy or a brown kind of a tint, I have a yellow tint. And again blending it out with my lightest tone. With the skin tones here I do have quite a nice um, collection of colors. So this is something that I could blend way easier than other, other colors because I don't have um, all the shades of certain colors. And since this is not the medium that I use most in my artwork, I did not buy every shade in the book because these markers are very expensive. And though there are other companies like uh, Spectrum Noir and the... Um, style file markers or the what were you the rot part um still i mean um <laughs> uh, 5 or 6 euros per pen uh if you if you um have to do art on a budget or if you think that you might not use them so much that you could justify buying these markers. Um, I would maybe suggest to only have a few, a uh, few uh, shades. And there, I would suggest if you do work on people, to uh, buy the skin colors, skin tones, and they come in a set. The Copic Chow. Uh, skin tones and I really like them. They were, besides the grey, the warm and the cold grey, these were the markers I used most. Blending everything here with my lightest color. And adding a little more of the yellow tint. Just here where the shadow will be. Okay. Now, uh, for my hubby, he has, like I said, a little more of a yellowish tint. So, he should get the milky white. Oh, I have to write down what I use for my skin tones because um, that is something that I want to repeat so 
Sarah's skin is E51, R00, and V95. All right. So he's going to get the yellow too. I need a bit of a darker tone for him as well. Uh, what are you? You are a dull ivory. Hmm. No, eggshell. That's maybe your second tone. And a barley beige. And then maybe see if I bring in the grape. But let's start with the eggshell with him. And for uh, him, the sun is pretty, or the light is pretty much in his face. Because again, it comes from the right hand side. So, uh, uh, I have to shade him on the left hand side too. Now I'm going in with the uh, milky white, the mid-tone that I also have on my skin. I'll just bring in a bit of that shade. And then the darkest shade that is the barley beige. And I'm just starting with that here on his neck. Very little only. Underneath his eyebrow. And here, where there is the darkest shadow. And then I'm going to blend this out with my lightest color again. And uh, like this, uh, you could well get really nice shades for one when you uh, color with Carpix. Just need two or three shades that you could really blend together well. And uh, that's a nice way to start with them, to learn how to blend these things together and with which shades blend really well together, which ones to use for certain skin tones or, I don't know, flower tones or whatever it is that you like coloring. Now he needs a bit more of the mid-tone and I want to bring in the lightest tone that I also had on my skin because he is a smidge too yellow. He needs a bit of a pink tone. Just a little bit. Uh, so we bring in the, what was it called? Pinkish white. Just here on the shadows too. Just adding a bit of red. Then blending it out with my lightest tone. Arm 
and final bit of coloring here. So if you uh, like coloring and you're new to my channel and you want to learn about colors and see uh, what you could do and get some inspiration what you could do with certain colors, I do have a show for exactly that and it's called Beyond the Lines and you can take a look at it. Uh, there's a playlist on my channel. I'm, by the way, using Pale Olive for Grisou, but I also have to write down Daniel's uh, skin tones. So if you like coloring, um, I go, I do have shows that are a bit shorter and they go for monochrome, um, monochrome uh, colorings in coloring books for different materials. So alcohol markers, uh, Indian ink markers, color pencils and watercolor. And then I do have between the color sections, um, so red, blue, orange, whatever, I do have uh, three pages that I do in coloring books where I paint the whole scenery and I take you through my thought process and show you things there. Let me give Grisou a uh, base coat meanwhile. So uh, there I uh, talk to you about what I want to do with the colors. So what time I might want to show or what time in the day and stuff. I could actually go over the eye and everything. I will color those black. Uh, so if you're interested, you can you can see that on my channel. And uh, I'm very soon gonna finish the. I'm going color by color by color parts. So after that, I will focus on sceneries and stuff in certain books or different books, and. Uh, show you a few things there. So let's have a little uh, mignonette kind of a stomach here. So he actually has a yellow green so I should maybe go over it with this uh, milky white that has a yellowish tint. And I need a shading color for him and I want a dark green. This is a style file marker uh, that I just put a bit of the dark green here. I'm gonna blend this with my Copics hopefully. They need a bit more work to blend, but I do like the colors they come in and, well, they're a bit, bit uh, price friendlier <laughs> than, um, than the Carpics. But now, let's see. Uh, gonna take a uh, warm gray number five to add a bit of shadow here just a bit and also to add that shadow up here because I think the dark green didn't blend as well so let's take a warm gray Blend that one out with the olive green and then hopefully this will work. Now for the highlight here, uh, for one I give it another layer on the tummy. I also want a little bit of a highlight here, so I'm just going to push 
that pigment to the side with um, that green marker. Uh, now I need a real red, so this is lipstick red for his helmet. To be careful to not have things bleed into the background too much. Because so we have white walls, but I might have a little bit of gray or blue here in the background just to cover up where I went over the lines a bit adding a bit of a dark red so I, red is pretty much one of the colors that I really don't have a lot of shades of so I'm gonna make do with just a little bit of shading here Feather this out and then bring in the lipstick red again and blend everything together. There he is. Now we need a bit of black for the nostrils and the eye. So this is going to be black and this is going to be black as well and I will have a highlight on there way later. Now uh, next up hubby has grey hair, I have a dirty blonde. Um, um, so I'm gonna take the Spectrum Noir markers to um, color him let's see I'm gonna take the IG1, IG4, IG6 starting with IG1 and those have a bullet tip not a brush tip but they are very soft so they are almost like a brush tip Base coating it. Also the eyebrow, of course. Whoop. And then, of course, I'm throwing things away because I have to do that every week. There we go. Next up, IG4. And uh, going to Speckle in a few lines here and there. He's a bit darker back here on his um, uh, on his neck. There's a few dark hairs left, not many, but some. And with the IG4 I also go over the eyebrow. And then I blend all of this with the IG1, which was the first marker I used. we go. This is also something that I have to write down because, well, this is something IG1, 4 and 6. This is something that I will repeat on the other panels. Maybe a bit more, hmm, a bit more of the darker one. It's a a little too light. Mm. 
and blending it out one more uh, it looks kind of fast to um, work with markers on these smaller surfaces because well you think you can layer something really fast but um, for the just these little things it's half an hour that it took me right now and I'm not even close to, close to uh, having the first panel finished so I think maybe I'm just gonna have the first panel color today who knows um, but yeah this is it just takes its time you know so for me I need a bit of a dirty blonde Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I'm gonna take champagne, yellow buttercup and warm grey number five for me. See how I do there. So just need the buttercup back here so just a bit for the highlights. And then the champagne. Just gonna feather that in here. Now I don't want to have the dark brown overpower that buttercup yellow, but still I have to blend the two together. So I'm going to start with the darkest tone actually and then move my way backwards towards the light. So I'm going in with the warm grey to uh, Give me a warmer tone back here and a darker tone too because again shadow. I'm going over it with the champagne. And then bringing in a little bit of the uh, yellow buttercup to, to blend the first bit. And then very lightly going over it with the champagne. Because I'm not really super blonde there. It's just that when the light hits my hair, I do have a light blondish thing going on in my hair. So that is enough of the butter thing. Oh, <laughs> wrong cap. There we go. So I might have to bring in a little bit of the warm grey. Just to darken a few things even more. There we go. Oh, my eyebrow. So, to note that for my hair, that this is E71. Y21 and W5. Okay. All right, now I need a sip of water. No tea today because again, it's way too hot. So, 
Um, whoops. We've got water dripping here. Not helpful. Now I have to think. Whoop. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Um, a card game that we play quite often is Love Letter. So I think I'm gonna. That will also uh, help with color repetition. I'm gonna use the dark red for these card backs because, well, Love Letter in Germany is printed with the card back being dark red. So I'm gonna do that. T-shirt wise, I wear quite a lot of uh, blue, black and yellow. So I'm probably gonna wear a yellow shirt. Daniel wears a lot of gray and uh, blue. So I think he's gonna have a blue shirt. Um, and then the wooden table, yeah, I think, I think that's great. Uh, we need the eyes though. The eye color. Daniel has bluish gray eyes, so I'm just gonna give him a little bit of a blue here. And I have dark brown, so I need a little bit of that. And the black for the pupil. Don't really like that maroon brown here from my eye color, so I'm going over it with the champagne brown. Just to take away the red a little bit. Um, I also need for the mouth here. Maybe you need a little bit of a. Hmm. I'm got no. I'm not gonna take it with red. I'm gonna take it with a black. And just have my tooth here sparkle later on. There we go. And that star in the tooth, I'm gonna take care of that at the very end of this coloring, because I would probably use a gel pen there. Now for the table, hmm. Definitely want this. Terracottas maybe a bit too light. Hmm. Maroon is even redder, I think. Let's see. Maroon or the burnt umber. What am I going to take? Oh, I'm definitely going to take the maroon. It is not as red-ish. See? This is maroon. This is uh, burnt umber. I thought it would be the other way around. But I'm going to take uh, that maroon color now. And I'm going to color the table and the chairs. Just with a solid layer. There we go. Chair number one. Chair number two. And now the table. 
I'm just gonna very simply shade the table. I'm not gonna have a lot of fussing there because that would be something that I would maybe work on with colored pencils later if I want to. If I don't want to, I just will keep this table very smooth and um, just have a little bit of shading, that's all, you know, no wood grain, no nothing. Like I always say, especially in the Beyond the Lines uh, videos, turn your artwork if it's more comfortable to your hand. You don't always have to work on it face up, like facing you the right way. a little more to go and then I will have to shade this table and then go over everything again with this maroon color again when you when you go back and forth with those markers you will get a very smooth blend in the end and not have those marker lines that I still have here uh, you won't see them in the end. So it's base coated pretty much. Now I have to shade. For one, I have a shadow here. And that shadow extends to here. He is having a bit of shadow here underneath his arm. And this is something I don't like when I uh, have color move into a part that is not supposed to be colored like this, but you could take that light marker, like I said in the beginning, just go over it and that will push the pigment back. There we go. Um, just need a little bit there, then of course a lot of sh shading here behind hubby's back. Um, bit of shadow here, just feathering, and of course also on my chair 
where the sun does not hit it. Be here, also here. Ooh. Of course, I have to color me too, because that's what you do. And now I go over everything again with the maroon marker. And that will bring everything together. And like that, those shadows will be very subtle. They won't look uh, grayish, but just a darker maroon. Because I pretty much layer another um, color. I sandwich it in between pretty much. So by starting with the maroon and then bringing in the gray and then the maroon again, this is pretty much a sandwich of colors. Let's make that makes things darker. Same thing again, always on the arms. So I'm going with my lightest tone and I'm pushing it back. Don't want that tone on my skin here. Just pushing it with another layer of that light tone. Uh, okay. Going to the next bit. And now on the second layer, I try to color it with the grain of the wood. So pretty much in this direction here. It's a bit difficult and tricky if you color around an object, say my hand here or the card stack. But if I can manage and have the marker go into the right direction. I will definitely do so because it will end looking nice and cohesive and you don't have those marker lines that I would have had I stopped here pretty much. Just a little more. And there we go. The table is done. Uh, for me, like I had said, I want a very yellow t-shirt because I love yellow t-shirts. I have a couple of them. I wear them a lot. So let's give me a yellow shirt. And I'm just taking a uh, yellow. It's just yellow. <laughs> 
no fancy name there. I'm just base coating this again. And then I have to look for a color to shade with. I don't want the yellow to be toned down too much, but still I gotta tone it down quite a bit. Because I'm casting quite the shadow onto the shirt. So I need hmm, the buttercup maybe. Let's try that yellow. I used it in his skin already. Oh yeah, that's a nice way of shading this. like that and now I blend this out with my first yellow again so I pretty much just put down that buttercup yellow marker where the uh, sunlight wouldn't hit so behind those uh, chair uh, planks there. Also I'm casting quite a bit of shadow with my head and everything onto the uh, front part of my shirt. There's actually just a bit of really light yellow back here on the shoulder. Also here on the shoulder. And I'm usually wearing blue jeans. Dark blue jeans. Hmm. Which one to take? Because I only have a very blue blue and then I have uh, a um, uh, one of these uh, mixing navy blues so maybe I could um, mix a nice jeans blue with that and use the same color combo on Daniel's shirt because again, color repetition makes for harmony on the watcher's eye. Huh? Yeah, that's not... Whoop! Throwing things. Oopsie. That's not too shabby with uh, the color combo. I like that. So first I'm going to layer the ultramarine. Just one solid layer. So for this shirt here and also my pants that I have already colored in, it's pretty much two colors that make the base tone. So by toning this down a bit, this is not shading at this point, I just go over everything with this, uh, what's it called, marine blue. And like that, I have a blue-toned shirt that Daniel definitely wears. He has not very many ultramarine blue shirts, so I couldn't really keep that uh, first blue only as his color. 
All right, that's more like it. And now I have to shade this and I'm gonna shade with a, a gray, a dark gray that I also used in his hair, the darkest one actually. Uh, that is the IG6 and I'm just going to shade a little bit. on his back and here where the um, where the table casts a shadow also he's casting a shadow with his head on the neck area like so and now I just bring in the second color again to blend this out. Mm, maybe I have to go darker because now I can't really see where I did put my shadows. So let's go with the next darkest gray and just leave it standing then, just blend this in. This uh, paper really is very saturated already, it's very wet. So it wants, the, the marker wants to blend without me really having to help it along. So let's take that to my advantage. Just add a bit of that dark gray. Now, the cards. Um, I need a bit of uh, the eggshell because the cards have a bit of a lighter touch here on the sides. Mm, and then warm gray five just to add a bit of darker tone and the back of the cards is dark red so I'm just gonna take the dark red marker very dark layer and I'm gonna blend in the red wine red that's what it's called as a shadow it's gonna be very subtle I think But that's fine I guess so here same thing on these cards And of course, also here. And the card in Daniel's hand as well. And then I can think about what color I want for the background. I think I really want a very light gray to have it feathered in maybe on the lower part. Hmm. Okay. 
need a bit of the lightest color for him, the eggshell, to clean up the hand. Uh, hmm. What background do I give us? Yeah, I think a light gray would be best. Um, that's a medium. Let's take the IG2. And just start here. Just to have a bit of interest and uh, oh, the feeling of a whole scenery because, well, we have white walls in our house except for me at one part of my studio so hmm the white would fit but I actually don't want white for this background Feathering this in. Just a little bit. And just a bit here as well. Pulling this a bit higher. And the same on my side. means that I have a solid gray here, here, and here, and up here I'm feathering. Just a bit here. Okay, that's the first panel. Well, it's about an hour. Well, now I have to give it uh, highlights. And the star here. I want this to be with a golden glitter pen. Right. Now on to the next panel. The first panel is done. And I would go for the tiny one here. Maybe I can have this finished. I wonder, uh, probably, I will have to uh, have another video made of that, but, well, hmm. Let's have a little bit of footage for my vlog. That's why you heard the ding of my camera. Mm. And I'm gonna start here with uh, Daniel. And I'm going to start with his skin and find the markers that I have used for his skin. Uh, that one. That one. Um, E51. I need to find E51. There it is. Let's bring this in close. And film a bit. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the lightest tone again. That is the eggshell tone. 
on this very tiny bit here there's not a lot of shading that I can do because I don't have the space for detail there but there's a bit of uh, shadow here again uh, in his room the windows are here so he is again lit from the front because of the screens but also because there is the spot of his windows a bit of shading here just a little bit of the darkest tone on his arms uh, maybe also here and then a bit more on top with the pinkish white tone so the light reddish tone and now I'm going to blend this out again with my lightest eggshell tone and there is his face now uh, on to his hair that was EG one, uh, IG1, IG4 and IG6. So again, I'm going to start with the right tip of the lightest tones with the IG1. And bring it into IG4. Maybe I can learn having the right tips up. And then a bit of the darkest tone here on the neck again. And of course, like I do every time, I'm also going to blend this out with my lightest tone. So I wonder, folks, if you have been working with alcohol markers and how you liked them. Were they something you really enjoyed or not so much? Um, I just wonder... Uh, if you if you ever tried them so if you could let me know in the comment section below i would really love that because i'm curious i want to know so um both of the screens in hobby's office are black but i don't want this to be flat black here so i'm gonna give it uh, a layer of a cold, cold gray first. Same for his mouse and the keyboard. And his phones, it's uh, headphones. And his chair. And then I'm going in with black, putting that pretty much like a shadow on top, just a little bit, because 
um, since there are the lights that do come from the top from his window, the top of the screen actually has a grayish reflection then. And same goes for the mouse and the uh, keyboard and the headphones. So I'm just going to bring in the black where the shadow is. Same here on his chair. And that was my battery. Vlogging camera said I don't want to work anymore. So I will finish this bit here and then I will put a new camera, a new battery into my camera. But first I want to finish the coloring here. And by going over this with another layer of gray, I'm just blending everything together as well as I can on these tiny bits. Um, but I need a bit of a light blue or pale, pale violet or something for the screen. Let's go with pale blue gray. And I want the two screens to have that color. Because that would mean that he's working. Because when he's the the screen when screens when he's programming do actually look quite white-ish. Um, let's see. That color is a dark violet. Uh, let's bring it in just a bit. to have a bit uh, of a stronger color and then blend it. Oh, there's gray on my pale marker. Blend it a bit with the pale grape and I'm going to clean up that marker off to the side of my paper. Uh, I'm going to give him the same t-shirt as I have before. Or maybe a lighter one, not just go with the marine blue, with a lighter shirt. It's one of the giant bomb shirts actually has that tone. So let's take it. I know, uh, I could just color it any color, but I actually go through his uh, wardrobe in my head and see, okay, does he have a t-shirt like this? Or would this fit? Or maybe not so much. Going to take the um, IG-8, so the dark uh, gray again to shade this shirt. Just a little bit more. Of the blue. And then for his table, he has the champagne kind of table, so I'm just gonna give it a solid layer of champagne color. And a little bit of a warm gray to shade it.
so I want to ground him here. So uh, I will put a dark gray in there, a very dark one. So IG10, darkest gray that I have. And just pretty much um, ground him there and have the parts underneath his desk be just a very solid gray so that he's not floating in this panel and I also ooh, hoo, hoo, I also have to add a little more here all right, uh, what I saw earlier is I forgot his eyebrow. So I'm going to take the middle tone of his hair color again and just use it for a bit on the eye here, same there. And then a little bit of white gel pen. Second panel, check. Now I can change the battery on my camera. I have another 40 minutes approximately to uh, color, so I would move on to my working panel and color that. And uh, if I can't finish this today, I would uh, definitely um, have a second video for it. Uh, well, I definitely am not able to finish this today in the video, but I will have a second video for it. Um, maybe later, uh, probably, I will film one for when uh, I'm on vacation, so uh, that would be for mid-November. So if you don't mind waiting that long for uh, the second part of this video, um, that would be great. I will have a blog post for this already today and uh, then have a second blog post for when I have this painting or this coloring finished. But I don't want to keep you waiting for um, so many weeks when um, when it comes to having the marker numbers written down if you see a color combo here that you really like um, that you can find it today you know so now I have to find my skin tones for me that's that one that one and I think this one yes so I just colored my hair no blonde this time because uh, my studio has no sunlight uh, that reaches to the spot where I sit and work. So I'm just taking that. Uh, so I, I just went with um, not having any yellow in my hair just a bit shading on my uh, that side because the light is here and the other light is here uh, so I'm having I'm also having a light from my left side but it is the um, least bright one so I'm having shading on the right hand side the uh, left hand side of my body but right hand side of this drawing here it's, like, whew, it's uh, quite quite difficult to 
describe. But well, if you've seen a couple of my vlogs, you know where the light sources are in my studio. So that then makes sense for you, what I just said. All right, now um, I want a, uh, hmm. What do I wear often? Good question. Let's, uh, oh gosh, let's start with the gray and the black again, because I know my camera is black that is actually filming this. So this is colorception going on here. I don't know. Just giving it a gray to have a bit of a uh, highlight there. Black. And uh, now for the chair, this is the darkest brown ever. So uh, I'm pretty much just gonna go for black because this dark brown is nothing that I can reproduce here. So I'm just gonna go for a black chair. And also a black table. This is the very dark tone here on the table that I'm working on. It's a very, very dark brown. But again, I don't have colors like that in my markers, not even close. So I'm just gonna have it colored black then. And this marker is slowly dying on me. It's one of the oldest markers I have. Let's try the chisel. And there's a bit more ink on this side. Um, the wood of the easel is rather light, so I'm gonna take a dull ivory for that. And uh, have a little bit of the warm gray 5 to shade it. And that was the second battery, so no more footage for now, but that's fine. I think I have enough for uh, what I want to do. Um, my brushes are also with, uh, they do have a dull ivory wooden handle. So I'm going to take that with a bit of the warm gray as a shadow. And they do have champagne brown colored bristles or hair here. It's okay. Also shading this a bit with the warm gray. Mm, my palette is white, but The uh, dot here has to be um, black because, well, it's at the table. My hair. Um, let's take a bit of a dark red for 
my mouth and then have the same color also here on my palette and the brush again color repetition and this is a rather uh, vibrant color so the second one that I want is maybe a blue a duller blue that I can also use on my clothes so let's make the scarf a duller blue So I'm having quite the cream colored or um, ivory colored uh, jumpers and everything. So I'm going to give it a, a coat of milky white and they go in with a buttery yellow, buttercup yellow, that's, that's the number. And then I have one of my favorite um, sweater jackets colored. pen for the highlights in my eyes and that is that now I would say maybe maybe the boats yeah let's color the boats they I had those on my desk uh, on the dinner table this year during springtime as decoration I made paper boats of lovely uh, pattern paper so let's have that mm. and another nice color was a yellow of course I also had some pink, so let's do a pink uh, tone maybe. This is dark pink. Are you a nice shade? Oh yeah. And then I also had red and on this one there was a girl, so that is I'm gonna have the girl gray. There was a figurine there, a gray one. So I'm gonna take the cold red because the warm red wouldn't really fit with the rest of the colors here for these boats. There we go. And now I'm going to shade them a bit. Just a little bit to not have them look too flat, you know. Boat number one. Uh, for the blue one, I'm gonna shade with a cold gray. For the dark pink, I'm gonna go 
Hmm. I have another dark pink. Let's see what you are. Maybe this vivid red. Just a bit. And the dark red, I'm gonna have a warm gray to shade. There we go. And uh, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. So I'm gonna zoom you out. Hold on a second. There we go. And I would uh, stop the coloring at this stage and I will have a second video for the rest of them. But there, like I said earlier, there is a, um, a blog post for today up already so you can look at them. Um, it really takes quite a while to do coloring and shading with um, Copic markers. Um, again, I had said earlier, it looks so fast, but it actually needs quite a bit of time because you're layering so much, but it is worth it. And I personally enjoy, enjoy it a lot. Um, but uh, markers are not my first choice of supplies to work in the studio. Um, it's uh, maybe, oh, it's actually in the, in the middle. <laughs> but um, once in a while, I really enjoy uh, working on things like that. Uh, they will bleed through those markers, as you can see here. So just be aware uh, with... Uh, whatever it is that you might want to work on with alcohol markers that you work on something one-sided or something where you don't mind that uh, it goes through and you don't want to work on the other side. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching along. Again, if you are into coloring and if you want to hear a bit more about colors, how I like to combine them and stuff like that, um, there's a whole playlist called Beyond the Lines where it is all about colors and coloring there. I tell you a few things that you can apply on certain different things and stuff uh, when you're working on artwork. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a wonderful day. Next week I'm gonna have a pre-recorded video. I'm gonna work on something else. And um, because it is Spiel, so um, I'm actually currently not in the studio working and next week as well uh, on mondays i can't record so i have stuff prepped for you um i will however be able to see um posts or questions or anything and i can reply on social media so if you want to leave me a comment in the comment section below i definitely can back can get back to you in a reasonable amount of time and i would love to hear from you uh, same goes for any other replies and stuff uh, on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram if you like to see something there and follow me there feel free I'd love that and I'm gonna see you have a wonderful day have a great week and um, enjoy thank you very much for watching folks bye bye